Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 119 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about caching in ASP.NET. Caching improves the performance and scalability of an application. Caching is the technique of storing frequently used data or pages in memory. Let's understand caching practically with an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. We will be using this TBL products table in this demo. So let's go ahead and create this table. And this table has got three columns, ID, name, and description of the product. And let's go ahead and insert some sample data into this table using this insert script. And finally, let's go ahead and create the stored procedure, which simply returns ID, name, and description columns from TBL products table. OK. And now, since this is a very simple table with four columns within that, I mean with four rows within that, when we execute the stored procedure, the stored procedure will be executed in less than a second. Look at the time it took, less than a second. Now, in real time, we may have uh, tables with huge amounts of data and we may be joining multiple tables. So the queries before they actually return data, they might take some time. So obviously, to introduce some artificial query processing times, I'm going to use wait for delay in SQL Server. So there's something called wait for delay. So we are intentionally blocking the execution of this stored procedure for you know certain duration. I want to block it for zero hours, zero minutes, and five seconds. Okay, so basically hours, minutes, and seconds. So we are blocking the execution of this stored procedure for five seconds. So let me go ahead and alter this stored procedure. Okay, so now if we execute the stored procedure, as you might expect, it's going to take at least five seconds. Look at this, it's still executing query three seconds, four seconds, until it's five seconds, we won't get the data back. Okay, so now let's go ahead and invoke the stored procedure from an ASP.NET web application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Um, on this web form, let's go ahead and drag and drop a grid view control, which can display the data from TBL products table. OK, and then let's go ahead and auto format this so that it looks a little better. And then along with the data, I also want to print the server side time and client side time. OK, and to print the server side time, I'm going to have a label control here. So let's drag and drop a label control onto this web form. And let's get rid of that default text label. OK. All right. So what we basically want to do is, in this grid view control, we want to invoke that stored procedure and display the data from TBL products table. And just to speed things up, I have this ADO.NET code already typed. Again, in this video, we're discussing about caching. Uh, we discussed about ADO.NET in ADO.NET video tutorial and SQL Server concepts like creating tables, executing stored procedures, etc. in SQL Server video tutorial. If you're new to SQL Server um, and you know ADO.NET, I strongly recommend to watch videos you know, in SQL Server video tutorial and ADO.NET tutorial um, that can be found at the link that you can see here on the slide. Okay. So now let's go ahead and copy this ADO.NET code, which is simply is going to execute this SP get products stored procedure that we have just written. Okay, so if you look at this ADO.NET code, it's pretty simple and straightforward. All we are doing is reading the connection string from web.config file. So within web.config file, we are reading this DB connection string, um, you know, connection string, and then storing it that in this variable connection string, which we are then using to create a SQL connection object. And we are using SQL data adapter object to execute this SP get product stored procedure, which we have just returned. And uh, we are telling the command type is stored procedure and creating a new data set, filling that data set with the data uh, know, that we get after executing this SP get product stored procedure. And then we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view, invoke the data bind method. And finally, I also want to set the text of this label one control. So if you look at this on, on, on this web form, we have this label one control, you know, on which I want to print the current date and time on the web server. And to do that, I'm setting text property of this label to date time dot now, 
which is going to give me the current date and time on the web server and then convert that to string okay so we have the date and time from the web server but on the client machine how do we retrieve the date and time on the client machine now we know that HTML and JavaScript they get executed or interpreted on the client machine on the client browser okay so obviously to retrieve the current date and time on the client machine I can use the JavaScript code okay so here within the ASPX of this web form I'm gonna spit you know JavaScript code here next to client time now look at this on the server side if you want to write something to the response stream how do we do that we use the response dot write method similarly if you want to write something using JavaScript then I can use the document object of JavaScript you know of the browser so I'm gonna use the document object and then this document object so before that we actually have to specify that we are going to write some script here so I have to use the script tag so whatever we write within this closing and opening tag is going to be JavaScript so I'm going to use the document object and the write method of document object to basically write the current date and time so the next question is how do we retrieve the current date and time on the client machine using the date function the date JavaScript function that's it we are done okay now if you're wondering what is this client time and server side time it's actually very simple to understand now look at this let's say I am at the moment in London and I'm accessing Gmail Gmail let's say the web server of Gmail is in um, North America okay so when I request the login page of Gmail you know the code associated with that login page is executed the server side C sharp code that's executed you know on the web server that's in North America so there might be a different time at the moment and then that you know whatever HTML is generated on that web server that's then sent back to the client who is sitting in London okay so on my client machine on my laptop you know this HTML and JavaScript gets interpreted and executed and then I want the time to be you know printed whatever time is on my current machine that's the client time and whatever the time on the web server is the server side time so obviously this date time dot now will 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 calculate the date and time on the web server whereas this date function you know the JavaScript code which executes on the client machine is going to retrieve the current and date current date and time on the client machine okay so now let's go ahead and run this So obviously, as you might expect, you know, this page is going to take at least five seconds to render. Why? Because the stored procedure is taking at least five seconds. And look at this. When I request this web form, you know, there are lots of things that are happening on the web server. First, an instance of this web form should be created. Then it has to execute the, you know, the process, the page events. You know, here we only have page load event. But in a reality, you may have button click event, drop down list, selected index change event several events so all the page level events have to be processed you know this adio.net piece piece of code should be executed which in turn has to execute the stored procedure retrieve data from the database you know create other objects that are required generate the HTML and then send that HTML back to the client so every time we make a request to the web server you know there are a series of events that has to happen and obviously some of those could be time consuming in this case you know executing the stored procedure is a time consuming process you know it's taking at least five seconds so my request processing now is at least taking five seconds and look at the current date and time on the server and on the client on the server it's 9 10 54 and on the client also it is 9 10 54 okay now again if I make another request for this web form let me open another tab and I make another request now it's gonna take at least another five seconds because it has to process all those events again okay look at that now it you know the time is uh, 1309 I mean 91216 and similarly 91216 here okay now let's see you know how to cache this web form and what happens when we cache it okay so to cache the web form all we have to do is use the output cache page directive okay so I'm gonna use the output cache directive 
okay and this output cache directive has got two mandatory attributes duration this duration attribute controls how long this web form is going to be cached okay for now I'm gonna set the duration to 30 meaning this web form is going to be cached for 30 seconds and then there is another mandatory attribute called vary by param okay for now I'm gonna set the value for this parameter to none okay so when do we use vary by param and what's the purpose of that vary by param is basically used to cache multiple responses of this web form now if you're not sure why do we need to cache multiple responses we will understand that in our next video session okay for now just understand that vary by param is used to cache multiple responses in our next video session we'll discuss about how and when to cache multiple responses for a given web form the duration attribute obviously controls uh, you know the number of seconds that this web form has to be cached in this case since we have set this value to 30 it's going to be cached for 30 seconds so now let's go ahead and request this web form now we don't have uh, this web form one in cache so obviously now if I uh, you know request this web form when I press enter the web form has to be processed all the events have to be processed the HTML is generated and obviously it's going to take at least five seconds okay and then when that HTML is sent back a copy of that HTML is also stored in the memory in the web server memory so now look at this since we have cached this for 30 seconds if I request this web form now look at this as soon as I press enter the response comes back within less than a second that's because the response for this web form 1.aspx now is cached on the web server so when I make a request for that web form 1.aspx what's gonna happen it's not going to execute all this piece of code again okay it's simply going to return you know whatever HTML that is cached in the web server memory okay so we get the same HTML back and how can we prove that we got a cached response back very simple look at this uh, let me close the first window there okay so this is the first time when we made the request look at the current date and time the server time is 9 14 10 seconds and the client time is also 9 14 I mean client time is 9 14 11 seconds but then the second request that we made is look at the server side time it is still 9 14 10 but whereas the client side time is 9 14 26 okay meaning the server side time didn't change okay that's because whatever was the time when we first requested this page it's the same time 9 14 10 okay that's because a response for this web form was cached so the web form the second request when we made a second request for web form 1.aspx we got the response that is cached and this piece of code didn't get executed again so it didn't recompute the server side time but whereas the client side time gets updated every time why because when the HTML that is sent back to the client the HTML and JavaScript the JavaScript will get executed on the client so every time the client time changes but within those 30 seconds the server time doesn't change but now since the 30 seconds would have been elapsed you know this web form would have been removed from the cache so now if I copy this and then make another request it's going to take at least you know five seconds to process this web form okay because the initial response from the cache is remote so now if I open the web form uh, you know if I make another request and then let me make another request and let's make another request so I'm doing all these requests within 30 seconds so let me paste that okay so look at that look at the server side time so this is the first request we made 9 16 30 seconds that's the server side time and the client side time is also same 9 16 30 but the next request I made at 9 16 37 but look at the server side time 9 16 30 okay 9 16 30 in the other request but keep looking at the client time it keeps changing every time and this is at 47 now if it is 9 17 at the moment then if I make a request you know this response for web form one would have been removed from the cache because why the duration would have expired 30 seconds is the time we want to cache this but after that anytime you know if somebody makes a request then the web form is going to be reprocessed so now 
it would have definitely been nine, over 916. So if I make a request for the web form, it will be reprocessed once again because the cached response is removed after 30 seconds. So now I get a new server date and time, 91750. But if I make another request within the next 30 seconds, I'm going to get the cached response. Look at that, 91750. But look at the client time, um, 918. And the first time it was 91750. Okay, so hopefully that makes it clear that you know this web form is cached for 30 seconds. So how did we cache the web form? We used the output cache attribute uh, with the duration attribute. Duris duration is equal to 30, meaning this web form is going to be cached for the next 30 seconds. So when any user requests this web form for the first time, the web server will process the web form events, execute the stored procedure, retrieve data from the database, create objects, generate HTML, and send that HTML to the client browser, and retains a copy of that response in the memory for the next 30 seconds. And any subsequent request during that 30 seconds receives the cached response. Okay, after the cache duration has expired, after that 30 seconds has expired, the next request for the web form has to be processed and, and you know, all that events has to be processed again and then generate a new response, which is then cached for another 30 seconds. So this web form is processed by the server once every 30 seconds at the most. Okay, so in this video, we discussed about how to cache a web form using the output cache directive, and we have seen the usage of duration attribute. In our next video, we'll discuss about caching multiple responses for a given web form, and uh, we will see how to use this vary by param. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.